Hi everybody, this is Pam at the Paper Outpost. Want to make a book from a box? Let me show you how. It's really easy. Okay, here's prototype. This is the little book. I had two of these boxes and uh, one I made into this little book or booklet or journal or whatever you like to call it. And this is her front. It has a collaged front. Uh, she has a uh, material spine with embroidery thread uh, signatures sewn in. And uh, signatures are the little mini books inside the big book cover. Okay, so this is one signature. This book has three signatures, two, and here's the front one, three. Okay, those are the signatures. And um, she's filled with just different kinds of paper that I happen to have. I had coffee dyed paper and avocado dyed paper, but you can easily just use regular white copy paper or college rule paper or whatever paper you happen to have on hand. It'll work with all kinds of paper. Okay, so uh, the inside of this book I covered with a material. This was an old, uh, this was a, a napkin from days gone by. I think I got it in Goodwill for 59 cents and it just worked perfectly for this. And there's a, um, I have uh, several different uh, series on how to make journals. This just happens to be uh, one way of making a journal. There are many, there are thousands of ways to make journals. So I hope you explore all the different ways there are to make journals, um, but here's one of them. Okay, so today we're gonna use a box, just a standard old box that you might have from some type of product at home. And uh, we're all over our colds now, so yay. And uh, now I've got the boxes. So what I'm gonna do first is deconstruct the box. Okay, I'm just gonna pull it apart on its seams. Now, you might say, well, why are you doing that? Because it already has a spine there. Why would you wanna take that apart? Well, because it just makes it easier to remove the top and bottom stuff for me. If you can figure out a way to work with your scissors to avoid that, then go for it. Um, but I found this is the easier way for me. I deconstruct the box, just tearing it along its glued seams and opening it up. I'm basically opening it up. Okay, now you have to remember what your box is going, which is going to be your spine. And let's just do for simplicity's sake, this is going to be my spine side. So I'm not going to cut that. This is going to be my front cover with the coldies on it. And this is the back with all the white writing. Okay. So now I'm going to open it up and I got to make sure I don't cut off the wrong ends. So what I want to do is get rid of this band. Let me back you up just a little bit. Okay. And I want to get rid of all this stuff here and I want to get rid of the bottom. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm going to use crafting knife and it, you can cut it with scissors. You can use a guillotine cutter, but I'm just going to use the crafting knife because it's right on. You can see it. You can see me do it right here. And I just think that's, that's valuable for this process. So, all right, I'll take my busts off right now. I can see this better. And I'm just going to cut where the lines actually are, where the folds are. Can you see everything? Ooh. Okay, let me back up a bit and let me scooch down a little bit. There we go. All right, now you can watch me uh, cut this. All right, now you want to go slow and firm. And we're cutting and we're cutting, holding your ruler steady. There we go. Okay, so all of that is gone. All right, double checking again. All I want is this side of the spine. Okay, the front and the back cover. So everything else has got to go. So this top and this bottom stuff has to go. Don't cut off this side because that's going to be your spine. Okay, so I'm going to take the top and bottom stuff off next. And this will work with cracker boxes or, you know, uh, cookie boxes, things like that too. But today we are working with... Uh, yeah. Okay, we are working with a coldies box. All right. I happen to have two of them, so I thought the perfect opportunity to make one and then show how I made one. All right, so there we go. We got that. I just need to get this middle part out. Let me get that out. And no rush here, no rush needed. Just go at your own speed. And uh, this may be a several parter video, just warning you, my video um, recorder, my phone records for about half an hour and then it just automatically flips over into video number two. So watch for part two. Um, we'll see how it goes here. Okay, so now I've got my front, my back, and this is going to be my spine. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to re-glue my spine together. And I am using something called Fabrifix glue. It's a great, strong, uh, clear silicone uh, glue that grabs really well. 
It's very, um, it's going to make your book sturdy. You can use wet white glue. It just take a little longer to dry. You can also use that. Art glitter glue is a good one for that. I've got links down below to all these different glues if you're interested, but pretty much most glues will work in this situation. So I am reforming my spine, which I just cut apart. Now I'm taking a look at what I've created so far. And basically I've created the, the basics of the cover. Oh, I gotta give my glue a second longer to grab. Okay, we'll let you grab there. Okay. And what I can see is that I need to, it's not straight here. So I'm going to shave this down a little bit. So you can see this book is a little narrower, uh, narrower than, uh, that's a hard word to say, narrower than uh, this um, actual finished book. So that's what I did. I just shaved off a little more on the ends so that I had flushness across the top and the bottom. So let me go ahead and do that. If you have one of these craft mats, it makes life much easier because you can line things up in little squares to make sure you're cutting straight. And you can use scissors for this too. Right, I'm just going to use the craft knife. Okay, I'm looking. I think you can see. Okay, we're going to cut. Okay, hold it straight. Hold it firm. Go slow. Okay, and we have that. Okay, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, we're going to turn it over. I'm going to do the exact same thing and get our flushness. All right. Here is our flushness. Now I'm going to show you something a little bit different about this journal compared to the other ones. There's a bit of a backwards thing I'm going to do with this one, which uh, you might, I don't know if you've seen it before, but you might find it intriguing. I found it kind of helpful in this scenario and I'll show you why. It uh, handles a few of the little issues that we have with making books. I'm going to retract my craft knife. Yes, I am. I'm going to put it aside right where I know where it is. There it is. Okay. So now my glue has glued and I have my what looks like a little book cover at this point. So I'm very excited. Yes, yes, I am. <laughs> that things are coming together well, getting rid of the garbage, clearing the deck. Don't need any of that now. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work on the inside. Uh, of the book and I am going to put down some material and the reason I chose to use material with this instead of um, paper and you can use paper there's no problem with that but uh, material you don't get that cracking sound when uh, things fold in here so sometimes if you put uh, paper in the fold of your spine with your cover you'll get the cracking sound as the paper pulls uh, so I'm choosing to use a piece of fabric and what fabric do you say are you going to be using I am going to be using a, um, a piece of this is a bed sheet that I got at the thrift store and I laundered and um, I am going to glue this down here it's going to be very easy to do so let's go ahead and do that I'm going to use the fabric fix glue all right okay just going to go around put it all over the spine you want it to grab well okay whoops all right here we go on across the field going across the field okay changing it up from mountain today it's a field all right putting lots of glue down uh, you want the glue spread evenly and well but not saturated where it's totally wet because you don't want to make marks with your on your uh, fabric if you're using it's a good idea to use a thin type of fabric uh, that one I used a uh, fabric napkin and uh, this one I am using a bed sheet just a regular cotton bed sheet um, and you can also use a uh, thin flower tea towels, like something like this would work. Um, got these from Walmart, the flower sack uh, tea towels, very thin. Okay, so now I took away any of the major hefty duty bumpies and I'm gonna take my material and I'm gonna slap it down. All right, here we go. All right. Start from the middle and just sort of work, work its way out. You got a, a second or two to readjust. There we go. Okay, and this glue kind of rubs off. If you've got some on your fingers, which sometimes happens to me. All right, if you've got any wrinkles, you can pull back. And there we go. All right. Okay. There we go. Just getting it in there, nicey nice. And the glue adheres more and more and more as you use it. Now what I'm going to do is run around the outside and just trim off the excess. 
and I am going to quickly wipe down my craft mat because sometimes I get extra glueys on here and we don't want that as we're working. So just make sure you clean up here. It doesn't look like I cleaned up my area much before, right? But uh, um, today I'm cleaning it. Okay, there we go. Just so we're glue free. Yeah, okay, we'll keep you close because we might need you. Keep you at the ready. Okay, so I've got my uh, fabric scissors. Uh, they give you the nice cleanest cut, but regular scissors will also cut this. So I am just going to leave about, I would say a half an inch around. We'll give you plenty to work with. So I'm cutting. Here we go. Cutting, cutting my fabric. Here we go. Another cut. Oops. Kind of squashed in on the half an inch there, but it'll still be okay. All right. So all I need is a little bit to fold over and then I got it. All right. And the last side so far, anybody can do this, right? Not so hard. Okay. All right. Are we dry? Are we dry? Let me get a cloth. Well, I'll just use you. All right. Make sure this is nice and dry. I put my stuff back down there. Okay. All right, so now what we're going to do, remember, this is the inside, okay? So what you want to do is take some Fabrifix again, uh, just put little daubs in the corners, little daubs, little daubs, little daubs, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to take the corners and we're going to fold them in. Now, some people like to cut these corners whoosh, and then fold it, but I have better luck myself with just, uh, I use thin fabric and I just pull the corner in and then I fold over top of it. And then I know that little corner will not poke out of the fabric. Um, all right, so now what we're gonna do, this is kind of fun. We are going to glue around the world, just putting some here, putting some here, putting uh, some across here, and then putting some here. And then we're gonna do what I call the easy fold we're gonna do this. We're gonna just take this and have it fold itself. We did that, one side. Okay, not yet. I'm gonna do you, one side. We'll do you, one side. And we'll do you, one side. And that way it tends to pull it nice and flush and tight. And you've got your inside already done. And you now this, strangely enough, is your outside. Now normally you might think that might be the inside, but nope, this is the outside in this journal. So now what we're gonna do, Say it with this one, um, what I did was I cut out a piece of this uh, collage paper that I made. And uh, I was going to do it this time, but I think I'm going to show you even an easier way because uh, you might not have collage paper at the ready. But I, I cut it out uh, to fit the front and to fit the back. But this time I'm not going to use collage paper. I'm just going to use this regular uh, scrapbook paper. So let's see how we do that. All right, you got some prettiness going on over there. Maybe we could use you. All right, like that purple butterfly and all. Okay, so what we want to know are, is the size. So I want it to be, you need a pencil. And um, what you're going to do, and you can do this making it mark on the back too, which is fine. But you don't want it to go where your spine is. You want it to go, let me show you. We're going to mark it from here. Okay, here's my spine. Okay, I'm going to mark it from here to here. Okay, and uh, that's going to give me the width. And then I want to mark the length. So I want to mark it to here. And then I'm going to know where to cut. You can put a dot here too. Um, but let me just figure out exactly how I'm going to do this. Okay, sometimes it's easier to get your first piece started. If you hang it over a little bit like that, then you know that's where you're going to start. And I'm going to want to cut here, a big mark there. Then I'm going to want to cut here. Can you see me? No, no. All right. Okay, so I'm, I have hung this over the edge a little bit to measure here, here, and that should be good. So I know where my, my points are. Do I know where my points are? Hang on. Okay. Here. And I want to be up a little bit. Okay, so let me go ahead and cut these and I'll cut them with the scissors this time so you guys can see me cut it. 
Uh, let me actually use the cutting knife because I can get a straighter cut that way. Okay, so I'm aligning that mark with this mark. And you can use uh, rulers and stuff to do this. I just choose not to. Okay, I'm not a big measuring fan that way. I measure in other ways. And uh, this is how I measure. Okay, so now I've got this mark. Can you see that? Yeah, uh, this mark here and this mark here. So I'm going to put those together. I don't know if I got that straight. Let's see. Okay. I might have gone on an angle there. That's okay. We'll trim it. So now I have an almost, what I call the almost shape, and now I need to trim it down a little bit because it's sticking up too high. Let me take that, put that over there. Take some off the bottom of this one. I think that was angly, so let me just double check with my crafting squares here. No, well, it's actually pretty straight. Okay. I want to keep more of that butterfly on, so I'm going to shave off the bottom end a little bit. A little shorter. Oh yeah, there's my mark. I see it now. Okay, so we'll go to say there. There's a good spot. All right. Oops. Nope, not that long. There we go. Okay. Okay, so now just double checking size. Okay, that's perfect. It's not crossing over the spine, which is what we want. We don't want it crossing over the spine. And now I have a template to cut out the back side. So I can just go on over here and I can grab my pencil. And I can do it on the back too if you, you'd rather see me do it on the back side so you can see it. But basically, just going to draw the basic shape so I know where to cut. Oops, I could stay straight here. There we go. And now I'll just cut that out. All right. Straight line. Suddenly need my glasses again. Eyeballs are always changing on me. Okay. Here we go. Lining her up. Got the craft knife at the ready. Slow and firm. Okay, got that. Turning the paper. Following the line, slow and firm. Okay, did I get it? Yep. Yeah. Okay, all cut, all clear. Now, retracting craft knife, getting rid of extra paper, checking to see that shapes are the same size. And yes, yes, they are. So all is well. Okay, so now I have these two pieces. And now I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to glue those on. See how quickly this is coming together? Quite quickly. Uh, okay, so I think I'm going to ink around this edge just because I, I want to. I think that would be fun. <laughs> so I am going to do that. Let me just do that now before I glue it on. This is optional, not mandatory. and uh, But it's kind of fun. It adds a little bit of a dimension and depth to your work. And uh, yeah. Okay, so let's put some brown on just to give it a contrasting color since this is very colorful. All right, and inky dinky 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 doo. That might be the uh, the official inking song. Inky dinky 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 doo. Inky dinky dinky doo. Dinky 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 doo. Dinky dinky. Okay. Dinky 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 doo. All right. Okay. And uh, we'll just see what that looks like against. The pink, I think that looks very nice. Okay, so we're just gonna glue this down and going around. Like I said, again, uh, we're at 18 minutes, probably gonna cut off around 30 to 33 minutes sometime. Maybe a little longer, maybe a little shorter, but we'll probably roll into part two likely. Uh, and I will put links to uh, part one and two below each video in the drop down description box as well as at the end of each video. So if you're trying to find this, um, part one, part two, it'll be easy for you to find. I'm just going to glue this down now. This is uh, pretty much paper to paper. It's also a little paper to fabric, but Fabrifix works wonderful in both of those scenarios. Using hand tool here. Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. There we go. How nice is that? And now we're going to just pop this baby on the back. I think I'm going to go with that butterfly up, this moth down. Yeah, just feeling that. 
So um, yeah, if you want to find the playlists, they're also linked down below. So I have a whole playlist on journal construction, covers and spines and signatures, which I'm uh, growing all the time. So I want to do lots more of those because they're really fun for me and I've had a lot of requests for those. So if you have requests, please let me know. I do keep a master list of all ideas. I capture everybody's ideas. And uh, then I kind of just, you know, you know, make as I go and uh, see what I feel like making that day. And if it's on the list and somebody wants to see it, I'll definitely uh, give it a go. So, um, you know, let me know. Let me know in the comments what you'd like to see. I got a lot of uh, different ways to make journals. And, uh, uh, you know, it's just, I don't know, there's just so much fun making them. Um, so there, we're pretty much done. The front cover and the back cover. Well, that was pretty easy and quick, right? Anybody can do that. And now uh, we have the spine. Da, da, da. Okay, so let's put the spine on. And what I decided to do with this particular incidence, and I, I want to show this specifically, because often your box will have a multicolored something that might show through, let's say you want to use a piece of white material or something like that here, and it might show through. Well, the best way to handle that is um, you can reinforce and obliterate the uh, different variations in color by doing a couple of one thing actually. You can cover it with duct tape, which is um, something probably most of us have or can get a hold of, and uh, that works wonderfully. And you actually want it to not only cover the spine, you want it to go around the edge just a little bit so it folds over and covers all that blue, covers all this color here, and just attaches onto your paper a little bit because we are going to wrap our material around the spine as well. And that's going to cover the duct tape completely. That duct tape is going to make your spine super strong. Um, you can also use Tyvek tape here as well, although this does have some blue writing on it. So you kind of have to d decide if that's going to show through <clears throat> whatever you're using. Okay. So let me just make sure we're still recording. Yes. Okay, good. All right. I just tilt you back a little bit. Okay. And uh, let me go ahead and get a piece of um, duct tape here. Just get, oh, I got, oh, let me get it. Oh, stuck. Okay. Yeah, this is, this is super strong duct tape. It doesn't have to be the super strong stuff, honestly. Oh, now I'm all tied up. Hang on. <laughs> Hang on. Hold your breath, everybody. Okay. Oh, yeah. No, that's not good. Okay, here we go. Here we go. All right. Come here, Mr. Duct Tape. Okay, I'm just going to hold on to you lightly. And there we go. Now I got a flat edge. Don't anybody breathe. Now I'm going to measure it. And I want to go below the top and above the bottom. Okay, so don't go all the way to the top and all the way to the bottom because it's going to show up there. So you want it below the top and above the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to... It's stuck to my fingers. Okay, here we go. And there. All right, there we go. Doing good, doing good. Going down, going down. Okay, now I want to trim over here and I'm going to trim about right there. Okay, a little long still. That's okay. I'm going to cut you off a little bit more. Okay, and there we go. Perfect. Whoop. Almost fell off my chair. Come back here. Oh, okay, <laughs> repositioning the eagle here. Okay, oh, I got a little bump of something under there. So you want to make sure you're bump free. It'll just uh, look better in the long run, but I have a little bump of something. Uh, could be a glue blob or something. But I'm just going to reinforce with my fingernail <clears throat> the spine folds, okay? And if you have a bone folder, I'm going to, need to put that uh, down below too. Bone folder helps with this little maneuver. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, there you go. There you have a very strong spine now, and it's reinforced, and it's also one color uh, minus the bumpy. And what I'd like to do is put a piece of material here. And I thought maybe I could do something like that. I could use the matching material. Um, or I happen to I want to show you this. Um, I took a piece of the flower sack tea towel type material. This was white when I started. And uh, what I did, I'll just show you what I did so you can see. Um, I colored it and I colored it with some spray inks and some distress ink. So let me just <coughs> show you how I did that. Okay, so let's say if I was doing that again, I would cut out my little piece and then I would just spritz it with some color. Okay, and then I would maybe spritz it with another color. Okay, and then I would take my, my what is this, vintage photo distress ink and I might 
rub it around a little bit here and put some brown on there too, tone it down a bit. And I would take it and I would munch it all up like that. Transfer the colors, mix the colors a little bit. Okay, and then if I have an area that I like, I might cut that out and use that as my spine fabric. So a lot of things you can do with plain white cotton fabric, just remember that. And uh, I'll put links below to the Distress Sprays if you're interested. Um, but here's the one I made earlier. And I just made this earlier so that it could dry and it is dry and ready to use now. So I just frayed the edges a little bit by pulling on the threads, giving it that old tattered look. And we do love that old tattered look with our old junk journals, but they don't have to have that, but it's just optional. And uh, so now what I'm going to, I'm just going to glue it down. It's nothing fancier than that. We're just back to gluing again with the fabric fix. So here I'm going to glue this all good and just decide how long I want it. And I'm going to take it about to the tops of the other papers on the sides for the front and the back cover. I'm going to take finger tool <clears throat> and just flatten it out here a little bit so there's no major lumpy bumpies. Smush it around a little bit and before it dries, I get a second or two with uh, this material. <clears throat> So inches, if you want to know how wide this one is, it's like uh, two and a quarter inches for this particular box, but that will depend on your box. So um, take that into account. And now I'm just going to put this up to the, make sure I'm covering the silver. Okay. And then go down as far as I want to go. And then I'm just going to trim it off um, with my fabric scissors here. And give it a little nip. And you could, you could measure and, and do this from the beginning, which would probably be easier, but I'm just showing you here. There. Okay. Back in the scene. Okay. And you can, you can pull on that to get it to ruffle. Get those little, little fuzzies going. We like the little fuzzies there. And with Fabrifix, like I said, you do have a second or two to relift. And let's say you want to pull it down a little further and make it a little longer. You can do that because fabric will often give you a little extra stretch as it dries. Okay. So now what you want to do is you want to make sure that these flaps are glued down. So you want to run a little bead along here. Okay. Just use finger tool to smooth it out. Just a little bit there. And then fold that down. And the same thing on this side. Just a little bead will do you. Less is more when it comes to glue. And uh, making a book is a lot of fun. And I think everybody in their lifetime ought to make at least one book. And I wish we taught this in school how to make a book. It's actually very easy. So there you go. Just making sure everybody is where they should be. Everybody's looking like they're playing. All right, sorry, not looking like that uh, Coldies box anymore, I could say. All right, so now we're just going to retest. We're uh, training, we're training our spine to, we've put fabric on the one uh, inside, we put um, duct tape and fabric on the outside. So we just want it to get back to where it was uh, folding very easily. So you just do this a couple of times and that let it, lets it know who's boss and who to listen to here. Okay, so there we go. Um, all right, so now we have that. Now all we have to do is put in our signatures and we are home free. So let's go ahead and do that part, which is very easy. Uh, one simple way that I, I like to do it is you grab a pencil and you decide exactly where your holes are going to go. Now in this one, I put three signatures and I believe they have seven pages each. Okay, so that's seven full pages. So I'll show you how I did that. Um, all right, but let's, we want three holes at the top, three holes in the middle, and three holes at the bottom. And if you want to keep your ups and downs straight, I'm going to use this butterfly to remind me which side is up because I have that now. But um, one trick that I, I use with myself <laughs> is uh, put a hole. Now, uh, sometimes I'll use the craft mat to help me decide where the, um, uh, you know, I put, I put it at the most middle of a square. It's like here's a square and I put it so there's um, equal amounts on either side equal amount here from the spine and here from the spine. And then um, I can put dots and then I can put a dot there. And then I'll put a dot here, kind of lined up under that guy here. Whoops, that was kind of low, put it even, that would be better. And here, and then do three on the bottom. 
one down there in the middle, over here, and here. Okay, so you're about um, an eighth to a quarter of an inch away from your spine edges. Okay, and now the easiest tool that I found to make these holes is the Cropodile 2 Big Bite. That's what it's called. Link below if interested. But it certainly makes uh, this part of the journey a little bit easier. And basically, what you want is the little bite to come down, not the big bite. Okay, the big bite will make you uh, give you a big hole, but you want the one that says, you can see this, 1 16th. Can you see that? Uh, I'm sorry, excuse me, 1 8th. That's 1 8th. And that is the little one. So all you do is you put your dot under where the little bite is going to come down and you take a bite. One, two, three, and then we keep going. One, two, three. I remind me of a uh, how many licks to get to the center of a Tootsie Roll Pop? One, said the owl. Two, and then he would lick and bite <laughs> the Tootsie Roll uh, sucker to get to the Tootsie Pop thing in the center. Okay, three. Okay, so now we have all the holes. And this uh, punches them all out nice and cleanly, which makes it very easy. <clears throat> if your fabric frays at all a little bit here, you can just come in with a, a tiny little fussy cutting scissor. <clears throat> and get these little guys off here. No big sweat. All right. <clears throat> so now we have, maybe I do need some of those Colties left. <laughs> Come back, I don't need to go get another box now. I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm healthy. Okay. All right, so I put these holes and these holes a little bit visually closer together so that I always know that this is up. This is the top of my book. This is the bottom of my book because it's wider narrower space, wider space. Uh, it's just a visual I use to uh, always remind myself because I had a habit of uh, putting my pages in which sometimes had writing on them and they, things were turned upside down and this kind of removes that error from continually happening if you make a lot of books. You'll know exactly what I'm talking about if you've made a few junk journals. If your pages are blank, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but once you measure where, I'll show you this, where it does matter. Okay. Um, let's get some papers for our signature. And we're getting probably ready to do a, a rollover here soon. So we'll see you in part two very soon. Look for the links again. Basically here, I just grabbed some random papers and see, okay. I took a uh, college rule, just a regular copy paper that was coffee dyed, some uh, uh, out of a college book, some music paper, more music paper, writing paper, um, some weekly expenditure paper and a contractor's paper. I'm just gonna, Mix that in there a little bit. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take that, straighten you guys out again here. Okay. And I'm going to fold it in half. Yes, I am. Feeling very bold today. And what's important here is you want a good crease. Now you can fold these all individually um, or you can do it at once. 